Hello, and thank you for joining us for the Advancing Oceanside podcast, brought to you by the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce. The Advancing Oceanside podcast hosts business and community leaders from all industries to help inform, better educate, and ultimately advocate for a prosperous economic climate here in Oceanside. Today, we are pleased to have with us Jennifer Paroli, president of the Tri-City Hospital Foundation. Before we get into discussing past programs and future opportunities, here's a quick message from today's sponsor, Tri-City Medical Center. Tri-City Medical Center is more than just a hospital. It has one of the most technologically advanced emergency departments in North County, San Diego, and is nationally renowned for heart and stroke care. With over 50 medical specialties, board-certified emergency medical physicians, and state-of-the-art technology, Tri-City is your resource for quality care close to home. Hello and welcome to the Advancing Oceanside podcast. I'm your host, Scott Ashton, and today I'm very pleased to welcome Jennifer Paroli as our guest. Jennifer is the president of Tri-City Hospital Foundation. Uh, thanks for being with us, Jennifer. How are you today? Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, <laughs> I find that the answer is there's usually a little bit of a pause, but uh, I'm actually doing well. I, I feel blessed that I'm healthy and, and safe, uh, but it is an interesting world. So thank you for asking. How are you? <laughs> I am great. Yeah. Good. Yeah, and I, I understand the thing about the, the pausing before you answer because it's, uh, it's been a very challenging uh, almost a year now since uh, since COVID hit us. Right. So, well, I know um, we're going to get to know um, a little bit about Tri-City Hospital Foundation, uh, but before we get into that, can you share your backstory so our listeners can get to know you a little bit better? Oh, thank you for that. Yes, I was uh, born in Houston, Texas, and I lived there until I was 12 and uh, an unfortunate uh, accident. My father was actually killed in a car accident and uh, it was life-changing in many ways. Uh, we, we then moved to California, but I think the biggest lesson that I learned from that and it shaped my life forever was don't wait uh, for those moments to share that you appreciate someone, that you love someone, you know, give those hugs now, of course, you know, it's a little bit hard with social distancing, but, but take those opportunities now. And it, it really it changed me from that young age. I felt like, you know, you walk by someone and sometimes you have that feeling, oh, I, I should ask how they're doing or any, oh, but now I just do. I say, how are you? I say, you look beautiful today or uh, just, you know, sharing that love. I think it's, it's critical and you never know um, when you might not have that chance again, and especially during this pandemic, we've seen that over and over. So uh, I, um, I started working at Tri-City about 17 years ago. I was assisting them with their cancer program, and uh, I started volunteering for the foundation, which I felt very strongly about because I feel very strongly about Tri-City Hospital. And um, it actually segued into a position. They asked me to step in. We had lost our president. He took another position. So they asked me to step in as interim since I had been on the board and felt so passionate about it. And uh, so I, I stepped in and, uh, and then they asked if I would stay on permanently. And what an honor. Uh, I never really thought I would find myself in this position in a permanent position here, but, uh, and I'm still helping them with the cancer program, but they have a great team and a great program. So, um, yeah, I've been, now I've been the president a couple of years and, uh, I see it as one of the greatest honors I've ever been afforded. That's fantastic. And yeah, I've heard many stories over the years of, um, you know, the leadership of our nonprofits, um, coming through that, that same type of path where, they were a volunteer for the organization and, uh, and just the opportunity came about. So that's, that's great to hear your story. Yeah. So, and I will say too, just, uh, as a side note, which I always like to brag, I have three boys, which are actually three dogs and, uh, they have been amazing comfort. And, um, uh, I, I, uh, I do play a little bit of piano, not, not professionally. So, you know, don't call for any bookings, but I do. <laughs> I do love music. 
<laughs> so a little sounds, more about me. Sounds like a good way to uh, unwind after a day of work, isn't it? With yeah. the dogs and the piano. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, can you tell us a little bit about the foundation and its relationship to Tri-City Medical Center? Absolutely. Uh, so uh, as most people know, the hospital opened its doors in 1961. And shortly thereafter, the uh, need was apparent that they needed some help because they needed to grow. And so the foundation was formed in 1964, and we are a 501c3 and a nonprofit. And all of our work and all of our efforts, all of our support goes directly back to the hospital. And over the years, um, we've, we've been blessed with so many of the community support, physician support, um, uh, even beyond that. And it's enabled us to, I think, really make a big difference for the hospital. Uh, we've purchased, uh, we did some NICU remodel. We've, uh, we've done the Women's Diagnostic Center. We are purchasing an MRI for uh, uh, imaging and uh, radiology. We, um, oh my goodness, I, I should have gotten my list out here because we have a big long list. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we, we've been able to have a great impact and, and not only continue the great care, but also bring it to another level with, with state-of-the-art equipment, with the robotic surgical system. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've, we've been able to do a lot for the hospital. Yeah, so I, I, I knew the, um, the hospital was founded in 1961, but I did not know the foundation um, came about shortly after that. Right. And the, the chambers in Oceanside, Vista, and Carlsbad, which many of our listeners may not know, uh, were actually involved in, um, in founding the hospital districts. So we've had a, a great relationship over all these years. We, we have, and, and, and it just continues on and gets better. So we appreciate you all because you've done so much for, for the community and thank you for all you do. Oh, thank you. So we touched on, on, on it already that uh, we've been in the midst of a, of a pandemic for almost a year. And I know that it's really changed the way that uh, we do business here at the chamber and um, with many of our community members. I'm, I'm curious as to um, how it's impacted Tri-City Hospital Foundation and how you're doing things differently now than you were a year ago. Well, it's very different. Uh, the impact has been enormous, as everyone knows. And uh, we've really, we had to pivot everything that we started doing as far as fundraising. And we immediately um, created a fund for the COVID Emergency Relief Fund and all of our fundraising efforts focused on that. And uh, we were able to, I feel very fortunate, we, um, we bought the hospital portable ultrasound devices, we bought the HEPA filter, air purification system, uh, PPE, AirVo, high flow oxygen, and the ECMO, which we're very proud and we, that just arrived and we're one of the first in North County to have that, which is basically portable life support. So it can go with the patient, you know, in the ambulance to here to there. So, um, and it, it also changed the way we, we were, we do our fundraising, you know, we mainly did events um, and of course that all changed. So we shifted to a little bit more of the virtual and um, we are cautiously looking forward to maybe the fall having, holding some outdoor events. Uh, we're all hoping that uh, we're going to make progress along the way, but, but it has been a challenge. Um, I will say, and I, I know we'll, we'll probably get to it, but just as we're talking about it, so out of the ashes of this pandemic during that time, the David C. Copley Foundation had reached out to us and asked about projects and what we were interested in. And we said, uh, well, of course we're, you know, with COVID that's, but we want to, we really need to remodel our emergency department. And uh, they, uh, they had some wonderful things to say. And so actually, as it turned out, uh, they offered a two to one matching grant up to $1.2 million. And we're trying to raise the 600,000 
and then they'll give us the 1.2. You know, our emergency room, I mean, we see over 58,000 patients a year, and uh, this is an aging hospital, and the quality of care is amazing, the equipment's amazing, but we want the facility to be just as amazing to ensure that we can continue that critical care for North County coastal area. And uh, so that's been our bigger project and it's been, it's been nice that we've been able to uh, start to put a little bit more effort behind, behind that as vaccines roll out and uh, we, we look for a brighter future. Uh, so we're starting to focus on that and we've got some Oshpot plans and approved. And uh, so we're really excited. We're hoping to break ground either the end of this year or the beginning of 2020. 2022. Okay. So it's interesting you mentioned events. I know that's a that's a huge dilemma for organizations because the, the chamber runs events too. And I've been to your your gala and I know that you don't just flip a switch and and you know make the event happen. That that takes months and months of planning and, and to plan for something that you don't know whether or not you'll be able to do it in person. Um, that's a huge challenge. So, uh, you know, I, I, I feel your pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it has been. And boy, we, we sit down and say, okay, let's think outside the box. How can, and so we did, you know, the virtual wine auction where, uh, we're also going to do a virtual spring fling auction, but, uh, people are still wanting to get together. So we're thinking maybe in the summer, uh, we might have a, a whiskey tasting where we're outside and some things like that, but it really has changed how we, and I wonder sometimes uh, how much of, of uh, how much will we go into a new normal? You know, we may never go back to what was actually what we considered normal, whatever that is. So yeah, moving forward, it's definitely thinking outside the box. Absolutely. So, um, you know, you've talked about a couple of things that, you, that you're working on. Is there any other project that you have on your on your desk right now that uh, that you'd like to share? Well, the ED remodel is the biggest one, but I will say uh, one of the projects that we've, we're wrapping up was our Wigs for Hope. Uh, another fallout of the pandemic is we used to receive uh, free wigs from the American Cancer Society amazing organization and we've partnered with them for many years with our cancer program and uh, due to all the challenges that everyone was facing financially uh, they were no longer able to provide those free wigs so the foundation launched an effort actually during COVID and uh, we called it Wigs for Hope and the stories that poured in uh, I get a little bit emotional but just how uh, I remember one of our patients and she shared her story. She said, you know, when she found out she got cancer, when she went through the treatment, she, you know, she remained strong, but when she had to shave her head because her hair was falling out uh, was the first time that she just felt the tremendous emotional impact of that and uh, how, you know, getting a wig. And then we had someone donate hand painted silk scarves. So that's been a, another amazing project that, that we've worked on. And I don't even want to call it a side project because it's just so important. But I think too, it speaks to the broad range that we try to reach, you know, the, the personal touch, you know, we want the big fantastic equipment. We want the big new MRIs and the latest state of the art. Um, but we also want that personal touch. We want to collect shoes and socks for patients who are discharged and, and we want to provide wigs for women who need to find some comfort and some self-esteem. So um, it's another reason that I'm so, I feel so fortunate to be a part of this organization. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned the shoes and I, I love that you engaged to the, the chambers in that and uh, we were able to participate in that shoe drive just about a year ago. Um, so. Can you believe? Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, um, You've been with the foundation for a while now. So what's what's been one of your favorite projects over the years? One of my favorite projects, besides the Wigs for Hope, I think it was uh, probably the NICU uh, and uh, women and baby services, um, being able to purchase new equipment for the for the neonatal intensive care unit was, uh, uh, again, very, it was, 
it was a very emotional connection to that, but uh, I don't know if you remember, but we did uh, the, the cameras, the webcams. So families that weren't able to be in the, you know, be there, be at the hospital, uh, we were able to uh, develop and create a space for women who could come in and breastfeed their babies and not have to stay in a hotel. Um, so a lot of it, again, that personal touch and yet that state of the art equipment. So that, that's that been one of our, our favorite projects, the NICU. Uh, the Healing Garden was a beautiful one and uh, we've had some uh, additional uh, memorial services out there. We've had we've been able to honor some of our donors, uh, Bob Carter and his family. They've been amazing, and he passed away. And so we planted a peach tree because his wife said he was such a peach of a guy. So uh, again, just a very wide spectrum of things that of uh, good projects. But I think probably the NICU, the Healing Garden, uh, the robotic surgical thing was pretty cool too, and the the MRI is amazing. The new one that's coming, um, it's it has the huge opening for people with claustrophobia. Um, it's able to uh, the the diagnostic process, and again, I won't even get into the details. I I couldn't if I wanted to, um, but that's going to be that's going to be really game changing for the patients in the community. Okay. So you've said that the world needs both band-aids and solutions for social and health problems. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? I would love to. Um, that that means a lot to me because I think you know we all have such different personalities and and different ways that we give. We you know we hear people talk about their love language and what that means. And I think there's a love language with philanthropy and giving. I think we uh, we have amazing volunteers, for example, who will go and sit and hold babies. Um, you know, we did the the uh, tails on the trails. You know, the dog therapy. We have volunteers who come in, and so their way of of giving back and and putting a band aid, um, a little healing salve. Um, that's that's their way of doing it. Uh, you know, finding solutions. I think uh, you know. From an economic perspective, I think that, that that's part of it. And there are people who have, they've said, you know, I don't have time to to provide that kind of care, but um, I can help find a solution for what you need and what the hospital district needs in other ways. So, you know, let's donate some money. Let's uh, donate some time. So I think uh, everyone finding their own way, what speaks to them as far as giving is so important. Um, and I think that there's true joy in, in giving. Uh, I think that's underrated. Uh, you know, just doing something for, just for someone else is, is a beautiful feeling. And I think it's, it's healing to ourselves. So I, I do love that because there's such a spectrum and there's a place for everyone. There's a place for everyone. So, um, we, we've all had people that have helped, um, influence us and shape us and get us where we are today so what what's the best advice anyone has ever given you well i think that uh well i've had a lot of great advice along the way uh, but i think the thing that speaks to me the most is a quote that i came across some time back and uh, the quote says you can't go back and change the beginning but you can uh, start where you are and change the ending c.s lewis and i think um that always reminds me that there is always hope and starting where you are because there's a tendency for uh, all of us in some ways maybe to look back and have some regret and oh if I had done that differently oh if I had done that differently but I think this is just a, another way that speaks to me that says every day is a new day and and you can start right now you can start right now with a savings plan you can start right now supporting uh, local charities. You can start right now getting healthier. Um, so um, that's that's probably the, the best personal advice. And I, I've shared that with other people that are struggling is just start start right now and let's just move forward in a, in a different way. I love that advice. There, there's a lot of hope in that message that uh, you, can, you can make things right no matter where you are right now. Right, right. 
So you, you've had a chance to share a little bit about what you do, and I know there's a lot more to it um, for our listeners that might want to connect with your organization and, and learn more about what you're doing and how they can get engaged and, and support Tri-City Hospital Foundation. Where should they go? Well, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Instagram. Uh, of course, our website, uh, www.tricityhospitalfoundation.org. Uh, you can call me, uh, 760-940-3370. Uh, I'm happy to, uh, to share any and all about what we're doing and uh, share if uh, someone's interested in getting involved. So uh, those are wonderful. And, and you know, back to the Band-Aids and solutions, even that, even, you know, following us on Facebook makes a difference. And not only uh, does it help share our story, but it also, you know, that, that positive energy is, is so wonderful to have. So any and all of those, just uh, pick up the phone or get on your computer or your cell phone and, and get in touch with us here. Well, Jennifer, thank you. We really appreciate you taking the time to be on our show and just share the, the great work that you're doing at Tri-City Hospital Foundation. We appreciate the partnership and just the opportunity mm -hmm. to work with you and, and be a part of what you're doing. Well, Scott, I really, I appreciate it. I, I felt very honored when you reached out and uh, I, I appreciate what, what you're trying to do and what you are doing. So thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm, I'm really honored. Thanks, Jennifer. Okay. We'll, we'll talk again. We'll talk again. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode of the Advancing Oceanside podcast, brought to you by the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce. Continue with us on our journey to help inform, better educate, and ultimately advocate for Oceanside. You can view all of our other podcasts on any podcast listening locations, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify or visit our YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe to catch all the latest updates on all things Oceanside. Join us next week as we host another influential leader from our community.